In this video, we're going to talk about buying a laptop. But before we get started, if this is your first time here, please hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. We publish computing related videos all the time and we don't want you to miss any of them. Okay, let's get started. In remote technical support, we often have people log in who have just bought new laptops and they're unhappy with them for one reason or another. This happens because people don't research, they don't know what questions to ask, they see an ad either online or in the paper or they walk in the store, especially a big box store, and they see something on sale with a special price and they buy it. Then afterwards, they're not happy with it. So in this video, we're gonna share three questions you should ask yourself before you even go look for a laptop. And then I'll share some information that you need to know when you're actually reading the ad or standing in front of the laptop that you might want to purchase. The first question you need to ask yourself is what size screen do you want? For Windows machines, the most popular sizes are 14 inch, 15.6, and 17.3. Mac, you have 13 inch and 16 inch. Those are your two choices. In the Windows line, the 15.6 is by far the most popular. In the Apple line, the 13 inch is the most popular. The way we measure screen size is diagonally from one corner to the other corner, just the screen itself, not the border. If you already have a laptop, you can measure your screen size and once you know that, you can decide, I'm happy with this size, I'd like something smaller, I'd like something bigger, whatever the case may be. So you can answer the screen size pretty quickly. If you don't already have a laptop, you should go to a store and actually look at some laptops and see which size you think would be good. For me, I like the 17.3. Now, word of caution about screen size. The larger the screen size, the heavier the laptop. Now, if you're just going to get your laptop and sit it at home, then the weight probably doesn't matter. However, if you're going to take your laptop, say, on a plane, or you're going to travel with it somewhere by car, whatever, um, then weight might be a concern. So you have to weigh the size of the screen versus the weight of the computer and figure out which will work best for you. The second question you need to ask also has to do with the screen. Do you want a touch screen? Now, if you're a Mac user, if you like Apple, if you like Macs, Apple has made that decision for you. There are no touch screen laptops in the Apple line. But if you're a Windows user, you have to decide, do I absolutely want touch screen? Now, if you say no to that question, you still might wind up buying one with a touch screen because sometimes the best deals are with a touch screen. But if you absolutely want the touch screen, then there's no sense looking at models that don't have a touch screen. The third question you need to ask yourself before you even go out the door or pick up an ad is do you want or need a DVD slash CD burner player? Many new laptops do not include a DVD CD player. And there's three reasons for that. Number one, it's less equipment inside the laptop, so it costs the manufacturer less to build the laptop. Number two, they can make laptops thinner if there's no DVD drive in it. And number three, the laptop will weigh less if there's no drive in it. The good news is if you wind up getting one without a drive, DVD drives are around $30, and actually, there's a link in the description below if you want to check one out. All right, so now you've answered the three questions before you even go and see a laptop. Now, let's say you're looking at a laptop, either an ad online or you're in the store and you're looking at a laptop. Here are the things that you need to consider. The first one is memory or RAM. Whether it's a Windows machine or an Apple Mac, I don't recommend any laptops with less than eight gigabytes of memory. Now, the truth is, the more memory you can get, the better. But I don't recommend any with less than eight. So the first thing you're going to look for is how much memory. You're going to find some less expensive laptops, but if you look closely, they only have four gigs of memory. 
I promise you, if you buy that unit, you're not going to be happy. Four gigs is just not enough. The next thing to consider and look at is the hard drive. Now, there are two types of hard drives. There's the traditional hard drive, which is abbreviated HDD. And that kind of hard drive has a motor, and it's the kind we've been using for years. Um, and they've gotten less and less expensive as the time has gone on. The second type of hard drive is a solid state, SSD, a solid state drive. Those, of course, are the newer ones. They are faster and they're expected to last longer than the traditional drives. However, they're more expensive per gigabyte. In fact, right now, at the current prices, a solid state drive is just a little more than twice as expensive per gigabyte as a traditional drive. Consequently, when you go to look at laptops, if you look at solid state, you'll see 128 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes, and that's about it. You won't see much usually bigger than 512 gigabytes. However, if you're looking at laptops with traditional drives, one terabyte is pretty common in most laptops. If you want speed, and you don't store a ton of things on your laptop, then the solid state drive is the way to go. However, having said that, I do not recommend getting anything less than 256 gigabytes for a hard drive. I know there's tons of them out there with 128, but I don't recommend any less than 256. The exception to that would be if you're looking at a laptop which has both a solid state and a traditional drive. The solid state stores the operating system, the traditional drive stores data. However, those are mostly in the high end units. So you're probably not going to see that in a normal kind of typical price range. The next area to look at is processors. There are two companies that make processors for laptops, AMD and Intel. Intel has what they call the i-line, i3, i5, i7, i9. I do not recommend the i3. I find it to be just too slow. And even if you say, well, I only do a few things on the computer, it's just slow. So I recommend the i5 or the i7. The i9 is the newest processor in the Intel i-line, and it's still very expensive. So until that price comes down, I wouldn't even consider an i9. Plus, you really don't need an i9 unless you're doing graphic work or audio work or something like that. What you need to know is that in the i line, the higher the number, the better the processor. Now, when it comes to processors, there are two factors that most people, they don't have a clue about. Number one is the generation. Processors come in generations. Here's what that means. You have a model, let's say the Intel i5. There are different generations, meaning as they improve the processor, the i5 processor, they change the generation number. So right now for all the i line, we're at the 10th generation. Um, I had a gentleman call me from a big box store and there was really a great price on a laptop. And he asked me if I could do any better. And I said, let me look that up. And it turned out that it did have an i5 processor, but it was generation seven. At the time, we were in generation nine. So he was looking to buy a laptop whose processor was two generations old. Now, generally, a generation is a year. Not always, but close to that. So he was going to buy a laptop with a processor that was two years old. He didn't buy it. Now, you don't have to have the 10th generation. You could get the 9th and you'd probably be fine. I wouldn't go too far back, though, because you want the newest equipment if you're spending this money for a laptop. The second thing about processors that people often don't know is that there are cores. There's a single core, a dual core, a quad core, and then it goes up to 6 and 8. And here's what a core is. If you think of a motherboard on a laptop having one socket for the processor, a single processor goes in there. That would be one core. A quad core, as an example, will fit in the exact same socket, 
but it would be like putting four processors in there. So consequently, a quad four processor, even though it still uses the same single socket, it's going to do more, it's going to run faster and easier, and it's going to handle the demands of modern day computing. The more cores in the processor, probably the better. Now, if you look at these things that I've just gone over, the three questions you're going to ask yourself before you even start looking for a, a laptop, and then the things to look at when you are looking, memory, hard drive, and processor. These are the things that will help you make an intelligent decision as to what laptop to buy. Again, don't ever buy strictly by price. Figure out these answers to the questions, take a look at the memory, processor, and hard drive, and then find the best price you can for those laptops that fit that criteria. That's it for this video. Again, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And if you have a question, just use the comment area below. Thank you.